Hello everyone, welcome to Shri Voyage. Today we're going to be going over part two of the Dior Birds of a Feather collection. Today I'm gonna to focus on the early bird palette and all the different ways that you can use this gorgeous palette. I already did the look of the Nightbird palette and I will link that down below for you guys, but I wanted to focus on two separate videos when it comes to this collection so that you guys can see a full look in one video and a full look in another video. If I do them together, I find that they're just too long and it's a lot of information packed into one video. So today I'm going to focus on the early bird look. So let's go ahead and get started on video two of the Dior Birds of a Feather collection. Let's take a look at the early bird palette. Really gorgeous. It has these beautiful kind of berry, burgundy, purple tones, it has golden yellow, which is really the most interesting color in the whole collection to me because it's something that I haven't seen before. Um, pretty pink and a nice pretty cream kind of ivory champagne color. I'm looking forward to going over this palette with you guys because there's a couple things that I didn't show in the first video of how you can wear these eyeshadows. I do want to briefly mention a few things when it comes to this palette. Some people online are saying, wow, they're really dry. Well, to me, feeling the formula, they feel like a baked formula, which means that they are meant to be used for wet and dry. I haven't seen anything on the Dior website that says that you can use them wet and dry, but I always use these type of formulas wet and dry because I like that it has the duality of doing something more sheer or something that has incredible color payoff. So I wanna show you guys what I mean about the versatility of this palette. If I were to just take a dry brush, put a little powder on it, I could just lightly dust it over my lid and create a nice subtle wash of color, has a nice sheen to it, and just catches a little light. Now for some people I have been hearing that the formula feels dry. Well, if that's the case and you feel like you're not getting enough color, what you can do is take a cup of water, I already have my brushes in here, <laughs> loading that color on there, and then I'm going to what I like to say, paint it across the lid. Because now, this will make the color much more pigmented. It'll give a nice lacquered, glossy, vibrant look to the eye. And it's definitely more high impact color. Do you see the difference here? So dry brush, wet brush. Now the perk about being able to use these wet and dry is that when it comes to a palette like Nightbird, which has these kind of very bright turquoise blues, these minty greens, and this kind of antique gold color, is that you can do a really beautiful, subtle wash of color across the lid with a dry brush, or you can wet them and create a really high impact color across the lid. So it makes it a bit more versatile, and to me, a better bang for your buck. Another way I like to wear these is to take an angled eyeliner brush, and say you guys feel like this is just like something you would never wear because it's just too dramatic, you can use this as an eyeliner, I'm mixing the two here, to create a pop of color without it being too bold or clownish or over the top, and you can put it straight onto the lid as your liner, or you can take it and put it on top as a topper, on top of your brown, black, or burgundy eyeliner pencils, and you get a little bit of a pop of color and something that's a little bit more modern and unique while still being a little more reserved. So for instance, you can wear it like this all over the lid, or you can just wear it across the lash line as an eyeliner. I'm gonna go ahead and take this really pretty purple and a little bit of that kind of cranberry color, mix them together. My brush is wet. So here's the purple and the berry color. And then here it is as an eyeliner. Now another perk to using this as your eyeliner is once these shadows are wet, they dry down and they stick or hold to the lid really well. They kind of just adhere and wanna just grab on, which is what I love about taking eyeshadows and putting them on top of liners. I also like using shadows on top of liners because it can create a less harsh 
look around the eye area. Liners are great for definition, but they can also be a bit intense and a bit too much. So taking a powder and putting them on top of your eyeliners will definitely soften and diffuse the harshness around the eye area. Just a little Shri Voyage makeup tip for you guys. So I went in with that middle shade and grabbed water to even out both eyes. They both were used now with the wet technique. But of course, since we're here, let's go ahead and add some more colors. So I'm gonna take my Laura Mercier camouflage powder brush. I don't think they have this anymore, but it was like one of the best, best brushes. If you can get your hands on one, I highly recommend it. I've had it for years and years and years, and it has just stayed the exact same. It's a great brush. So what I'm going to do is take my little MoMA cup, Art Every Day, which inspires me to stay creative, <laughs> and I'm going to dip this brush in here. Keep a paper towel near you so that you can wipe off any excess water. What I'm gonna do is take this beautiful kind of gold mustard color. So I'm gonna take that and go right on top that pink color I laid down. And from there you can take your finger and you just wanna blend out that edge so that there's no harsh lines. This time I'm gonna focus just on this kind of mustard color, this pink that I already have on, and this kind of champagne ivory color, just to show you guys how you can wear just these three. And then on this side, I'm gonna focus on these two over here and do something a little bit more minimal. Right, so let's get into the next color. I wet my brush again. I'm gonna grab this kind of champagne ivory color. And I'm gonna go right a bit on the brow bone, then take my finger Lightly move it across here. Same color, I'm gonna pop it right on the center of the lid. I'm telling you guys, when I get that cup out, I wet these shadows, the painter in me comes out. I just wanna, my face becomes the canvas and I just wanna try new things, create something a little more unique, different, and fun. Quite the bold kind of mustard yellow look, but I love it. I'm gonna take a little more of that champagne color. I'm gonna go right here on the outside. Take my finger and blend it. Don't be afraid to use your lighter colors as your highlighters. In fact, you can mix these two and highlight her or cheekbone or your occipital bone right here. From there, I'm gonna take, again, that kind of champagne gold color. So, ooh, there we go. As you can see, when I wet the brush and added that color, it really just made that pop. All right, this is what I like to call fall gold. And when I was looking at this palette, I thought I wanna do the colors of fall. And I think of gold and yellow when it comes to the changing colors of the leaves. And then you have on the other side, a lot of the purple plum and oranges that come out as well. Now say you guys wanna do something that is like the orange color of leaves. You're like, there's no orange in there. Let's make orange. What you're gonna do is take this yellow you're gonna take a bit of this red or cranberry color. And when you mix them, you get a really pretty autumn color leaf here. So take a look at that here. That's the yellow and the beautiful cranberry color. So you can create something as beautiful as that, which I'm going to do right now for you guys. Take a bit of this, we'll take a bit of that. A bit more of this and a bit more of that. I'm just gonna go right on top here, that pink. Take my finger and I'm just going to blend that edge here. If you wanna make this more bold, all you do is just keep adding you know, a little bit more yellow will make it more soft peach and a little bit more red will make it more of a, um, like a burnt umber, deeper orange color. I'm gonna take my angled brush by MAC. This is the 266, one of my favorite brushes ever. I'm going to take this purple burgundy color. 
I'm going to go under this eye area here on the waterline. I focus a lot of the pigmentation on the outer edge and then I lightly move in closer to the eye and I work in a lighter texture. I don't go dark all the way around as you can see. A lot of the pigment is focused on the outside to do um, more emphasis on um, the shape of the eye and it does a little lifting. And then from there, I lightly feather the rest of the color across. You can see it's down here a little bit and then it kind of, I start to push it up into the waterline so that it's a little bit more, um, just softer looking that way. Again, taking that purple, So I'm going to go in with my wet brush, grab a little bit of that pink color, and highlight that inner corner. Woo! I love when you wet that brush. Let's say I wanted to take it a step further and really pop the um, center of the lid here, create a more wide awake look, grab a bit more of that pink color, and you're going to go right in the center of that lid. Whatever's left over on the brush, I will lightly put in the center here. And go right here on the outer cheek area. Take my finger and lightly blend. I can take a little bit of that and put a bit right here. And a tiny bit down the middle. I don't want to look like a disco ball. Just a little bit. Just a very little bit so that when I turn it catches light. Now I want to kick this up a bit so I'm going to add a bit more. All right, I'm going to go back in. I wet my brush a bit and I am loading the brush with the mustard kind of yellow color and I'm going to go right on the outer edge here with that color. And just like the other eye, I'm going to slowly bring it in, focusing most of the pigment on the outer edge out here. I wet my brush again. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of that yellow kind of champagne gold color. And I am going to lightly move across the lid now going this way. We have now the gold. And then we have the more purple orange color. Hopefully this gave you guys a better idea of all the different looks and different techniques and ways that you can wear this palette. Let's go ahead and finish the look with the blushes. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the orange with the orange side and something a little bit more subtle and natural, which is the nude glide on this side. So let's start with the coral flight. Take my beautiful Kevin Aquan blush brush here. Just pop this on the outer cheek area. You could pop it this way first and then feather it on. All right, now we have the Nude Glide. Nude Glide is so pretty. All right, Nude Glide and Coral Flight. This is the lipstick I wore yesterday in the video Nightbird, which will be linked down below for you guys. Just a really pretty pink color. All right, beauties, we have hit the end of this video. If you guys have any questions, suggestions, you know what to do. Comment down below. Love hearing your guys' thoughts, hearing your guys' take on the look or any of the looks that I do for that matter. So don't forget to comment down below. And if you want to support Shri Voyage, you like what you're seeing here, the best way to do that is to go ahead and subscribe, leave a comment down below, hit that like button and use my affiliate links for any of your shopping needs. You can buy this look or any other products that you may want. I have a list of stores down below that helps me to get a small commission so that I can continue to buy products to share with you all. All right, everyone, as always, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other. I'll see you in the next video.